Hey guys, Justin Brock here, and I'm so excited that Cody asked me to be part of the 8% Nation virtual conference uh, with so many people out there watching and so many awesome speakers sharing this virtual stage. I am uh, humbled that you know I'm I'm actually you know able to speak at the same time to the same crowd. So I appreciate you guys listening to me. I hope I can some, pro provide some value. Um, I plan on this being extremely contextual. I'm talking about our brock and mortar uh, or brick and mortar play on, on insurance. We have a um, pretty large book of Medicare business in the Northeast Mississippi area, and we run a Facebook group called Medicare Gurus. Um, so that's kind of our claim to fame. If you haven't heard of me, please look it up on YouTube and you'll see that we uh, practice what we preach every day and that we're running a legitimate uh, agency. So the information that we have to share should be practical and actually work because it's working for us in real time. So what I'm going to get to is talking about reverse engineering the Brock and Mortar. Uh, and that's that Brock and Mortar name came from a friend of ours, Zach Munger. He came into our office to tour it from the inside out. Uh, for about a year ago, and uh, when he did, he said, oh, instead of a brick and mortar, we're gonna call it Brock and Mortar as a play on my name, Justin Brock. And so we've kind of ran with it. So we're gonna reverse engineer the Brock and Mortar. Slide. All right, so to follow along, if you're having trouble, these slides will turn black here in a minute. It'll definitely be easier to see for you for sure if you can't see them now. But you can you, you can uh, scan this QR code or head over to medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar and there'll be some visual references to what we're talking about here that should help you uh, be able to see that. So open that up in a new window, pull it up on your phone somewhere. You'll be able to see the slides that I'm going over as well as uh, being able to see a little video from uh, inside our office uh, and see how the Brock and Mortar uh, vision works. So next slide. Remember that uh, as medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar. Yes, dot academy is a thing. All right, so I'm going to go over these seven steps, and if you're looking at that visual reference, you should see a video of a lot of action in our office. It's uh, about few, a few hours worth of time lapse for people coming in and out in our busy season. We do get a lot of foot traffic, and it's awesome, and that's what I'm going to be trying to share with you how to replicate. Uh, if you check out here, so this is uh, our, our number one principle. We're going to go over seven uh, principles to help you uh, set up your brick and mortar or have a brick and mortar office. One is utilize national budgets to fuel your brand. What I mean by that is uh, by using these national budgets to fuel your brand, I'm talking about the big spenders in the world. Like we can't all outspend the largest private equity backed corporations or, or publicly traded corporations advertising budgets, but we can utilize what they do to drive awareness and we can kind of be that uh, warm, you know, presence locally or, you know, in an area to, to stand out in a crowd of, of maybe overproduced uh, advertisements. So always be branding is my little sub catch in here. So head over to the next slide there, said. So uh, as these slides, I'm going to talk about Joe Namath is not hurting you. So Joe Namath, it, you know, anybody that's watching TV at all, uh, will see a Joe Namath Medicare commercial. Anybody that's selling Medicare definitely um, has has seen has heard their clients ask about the Joe Namath commercial. What's Joe Namath talking about? Blah blah blah. And um, a lot of people get irritated with those advertisements. They're irritated about the compliance side of them, or you know having to compete with them. But what I like to bring up is how many people who aren't your current customers are hearing the Joe Namath uh, commercial, and they're also confused or or. Or they, they are aware of it. They're made hyper aware to plan availability or annoyance by that. And I want you to know that you can capture that, that product of that national marketing budget by being able to latch onto that problem and be that voice of reason in a crowded field of overproduced advertisements. Second thing I wrote is the e-healths of the world, the big, large, publicly traded groups, um, are creating a vacuum in the market that can only be filled with house-to-house -house brokers or Brock and mortars, brick and mortar offices, somebody local to cut through the mud. Now, why I'm not saying that they're not doing a ton of business at all. They're doing a ton of business, but there's some people that are not going to call a national marketing group like that and do business over the phone. There's just some people that want, especially in the Medicare or senior market for a service like this, where they have to provide so much valuable information. There's a lot of people that are very, very uh, turned off to that idea. And so you have an opportunity to help those people in a different way. Last thing I've written here is people print off content from my friends' nationally branded websites and bring it to me to help them decide on a plan. We have friends that have 
really large sites that get 200,000 uh, Medicare beneficiaries visiting monthly. And um, we have people that locally here and all over the nation really is doing this. They're, they're printing off things that they've read online on these sites, but bringing it to us locally, bringing it to our rock and mortar, or calling us and reading it locally because there's a little bit of trust in us being local. So you can still do business over the phone locally, but the idea that you're over there and they could get you if they want to. Some people say, I know where to find you if I have a problem in a kind of threatening way, but uh, this is all, all in good fun. It's a joke. But next slide. So I'm going to go over practical steps. I'm going to kind of move over here just to break the monotony. But practical step number one, I'm going to try to do a practical step with each of these principles. Practical step is when you're recording content, creating graphics, mailers, et cetera, make mention of some of these iconic commercials like the Joe Namath, Dan Danny Glover, these different celebrities that are on these commercials. Make mention of them and to give your audience a clear indication that you're standing out in the crowd, right? Um, that you are a local resource. If they want to know about those plans, but they're too afraid to call this 1-800 number, they can come to you locally or call you locally and you're there. It's the Brock and Mortar concept. Next slide. So practical step number two here is if you don't want to make mention, some people feel awkward about doing that and I understand that. So just be educational and make your content down to earth, local, not overproduced. That local feel wins in a small to mid-sized market. It makes you feel like you're you know, the, the uh, mom and pop shop. Some people want that for sure. So next step. So number two, you're not Gary Vaynerchuk. Now this is not a dig at Gary Vaynerchuk, which you'll see in the next slide. I'm not digging at him. I'm saying that you're not Gary Vaynerchuk. So a lot of people that are watching these virtual conferences are very in love with the idea of digital marketing, and so are we. Digital marketing is great, but the internet is great, but it isn't all that exists in the world. It's not the only way to reach uh, people. It's not the only way. So everybody that's getting so into digital sometimes get away from some of the down-to-earth, you know, old-school ways that still work. Next step. First of all, your demographic demands a diverse array of advertising strategies. So your, your demographic is aging, so some of them are 65, some of them are 75, some of them are 85. Now I'm talking mostly to Medicare or senior market final expense agents, but uh, that demographic, the older demographic, is, is a very diverse group. There are tons of them that are on Google, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're doing these things that are uh, more you know, revolutionary, but there's a ton that aren't. And even some of the ones that are online are responding to local advertising while being online, like the people that are printing off the Google uh, stuff that they find and bringing it to us. Um, so these are the different ways, you know, I'm just laying out here. Facebook, Google, YouTube, TV, radio, newspaper, direct mail, billboards, wrapped RVs. I made mention of wrapped RVs. There's a guy in Utah that has one. I think it's a cool idea. He drives around town and he's a billboard for his own business all the time. This isn't a dig at Gary Vee. I love the guy. But the wacky, wailing, inflatable arm tube man, men work. They, they do work, especially in mid-sized branded markets. So what I mean, I, I'm making a, a kind of a goof at the whole like wacky, wailing, inflatable arm tube man. But there is some truth that that attention locally, especially drives uh, business to that local office. It brands that local location. It makes them think when they're driving by, what is that office? Oh, it's a Medicare office. Okay, oh, it's a life insurance office, whatever. We aren't in retail. It's the service industry with a middle to late age market. So if you're marketing to middle to late age and you're in the service industry, I know a lot of times you're seeing stores like uh, Gap or places that are closing down their, their local branch, but those are retail clothing stores. Uh, and those are being affected differently than the service industry by the online revolution, right? So next slide. Practical step. For Brock and Mortar, you want to buy or rent an office with great sign space and or curb view, preferably both. If you can have somewhere where you have a lot of traffic coming by and maybe a signage space that is, you know, stands out and is, is good. We just bought a building off of Main Street for a second location with a huge sign space. And one of the things we thought is, shoot, I mean, a, a billboard right down the street is $1,000 a month. And we're getting one included in the cost of our building right here. So we thought about that as part of our equation. Next step. Practical step number two on this uh, slide is outside that office do something to get attention. Word of mouth over time will work. We'll do the work. It will. So word of mouth over time is awesome. Word of mouth, uh, you know, the more people that get to your office is going to build word of mouth, you're going to get more and more traffic. But at first, the wacky wailing inflatable arm tube man, put it in an acronym here, W-W-I-A-T-M, 
isn't a bad idea. The wacky Wailing and Flame Alarm too, man, I know that's a goofy thing that I'm talking about, but just like flags, signs, a signage space on your building, flyers in neighborhoods around to drive awareness that you're there so that when people need you, you're there. There's people that'll see that and be like, oh, he's there and they don't need you now, but they need you a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Their parents need you, but they know you're there. They know you're there. Next slide. Educate. Oh, and then educate, 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 educate. So what am I talking about here? Educating, next slide. Educational seminars, educational webinars, TV commercial segments that educate, radio shows. So this is a big one I've been telling people. A lot of stations will give you a weekly segment on radio for 500 bucks a month, even if there's only 1,000 listeners on there. You're getting 10 minute segments to talk about stuff. You also get to use that content that's being recorded on good sound equipment. You can go start a podcast with that, that, uh, in, that, that time. They'll give you that uh, download to do that. You can start a YouTube channel with it. You can start all of the above. You can use that content, but also you're inundating an audience with a long form message. So you're gonna get a much higher turnout of a smaller audience with that. Definitely worth looking into for almost anybody. Um, even graphics can be educational. So when you're doing mailers, make sure that you're adding something that's educational. We have a, a friend uh, does business with us at, you know, at one of our downline agencies. They send a, uh, a three-page long-form Turning 65 letter to T65s that, that just goes through and explains Medicare A to Z and then just ask them if they have any information or need help with the plans to call. But that long form educational letter in the mail really helps. He's been sending it for years, so he's getting a great response. So we are in the thank you economy. So that pun back to Gary Vee, he comes up with the thank you economy. People like to do business, uh, they say thank you by doing business with you. So if they're saying thank you by doing business with you, that means you have to give them something to say thank you for. Provide education, provide content, be a resource for them before they've done business for it, with you. So, next slide. Practical step number one, start with seminars. I talked about seminars. I feel a little bit hypocritical here because we have just added seminars, but if I was starting all over and I'm starting a brock and mortar, I would go out and start doing seminars day one to drive traffic back to our office because it works, it's pretty cost effective, and a lot of times, like if you're in Medicare Advantage too, these local carrier representatives that are trying to expand will help you with some of that local cost. Uh, we get some, definitely get some support from one of our uh, carrier partners at Aetna that help us with this. Now it probably depends on the market and what their plan availability is there, but you know you can always look at that and see if you can get support from a good carrier. Um, so then when they fill out their permission to contact forms, this is important. You need to call them to set up appointments at your office. Okay, set up as many appointments in your office as possible because you're branding your location by getting more people into your office where they know where it's at. So then when they refer you, you'll actually get to the point where they're referring you, yeah, he's over on 144 South Thomas Street across from that Texaco, the Harbor Freight. People are walking into your office then. Oh, he's about a quarter mile from the Social Security office. So when you go to the Social Security office, you know, head over there. That's the kind of stuff we try to put in the, the minds of our clients. But by them being here, they're out there being advocates for you, right? Next slide. Fourth principle, everything you do, advertise the idea of walking in the office. So advertise the office location. Next slide. Practical step here is staff the location 40 hours a week. From the get-go, you need to be prepared to have at least a receptionist there 40 hours a week. If you're transitioning from being a field agent to this, you're going to need somebody there because you're still going to have to go out and run some direct mail leads or market you know, through B&I groups or whatever. You're not going to be there all the time. You need somebody there all the time to make it feel like a staffed, professional location so that you will get more and more people to walk in and be comfortable with that. Even if she's just there to, he or she is there to set up appointments for you, etc. So staff the location 40 hours a week, hire a receptionist and have them call your current clients to set up reviews in the office. So if you have 200 clients already, 300 clients, 1,000 clients, whatever, you want to get them in your office. Now they become advocates for your office. They want the office. Trust me, we've been through this. We saw it happen. We didn't start off with an office. We've seen the other side. They wanted a local office. They wanted somewhere to go. Now we have so many people coming in here, it's almost uncontrollable, as you can see by the video at medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar. So get as many people in your office as possible to create the word of mouth, right? Next slide. Number five, allow time to work. You need to allow time to work 
uh, allow time for this method to work. So we, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not like you, you open the office, you hire somebody, and boom, everybody's there, right? You have to allow a little bit of time for this to come to fruition, but continue to make, uh, pave the way. A brand is not built overnight. You know, and you have a branded location, you have a branded name, you have a branded business name. You can brand a lot of things, but that location being branded, uh, it's more of like a gradual effect. It's like a snowball effect, right? So allow it. It takes some time. If you build it correctly, they will come. Next slide. In the meantime, you need to keep putting food on the table. I've seen a lot of people that set up the office and then they just uh, kind of quit doing what they were doing before that was actually making ends meet. So you got to keep doing that. You have to uh, staff the office appropriately. So there's a little bit of an investment on the front end because you're having to buy or rent a building, staff the office, but it is, the, it is a great way. It's not the only way. It's a great way to really get to the next level, to build something to scale that you can actually eventually build yourself out of and have this massive, you know, money-making concept for you, staffed with tons of LOAs, et cetera. Um, so next slide. Practical steps. What was working before? Direct mail, seminars, cold calling are all low barrier to entry. They could be things you want to become unnecessary or supplementary in the future. Maybe it's things you're trying to get away from, but do not stop bringing in new business while your brock and mortar is building. So your brock and mortar continues to build you want to make sure you're bringing new business in the front door, but that front door can be metaphorical. If you're still doing it by going out and writing business through direct mail leads, that's fine. Just always be trying to get people in the office too. Always trying to get people in the office and it builds that branded location. Next step. Number six, you need a reaper. So I'll tell a little story. When I was six, six years old, seven years old in the summer, I lived in a town called Marietta, Mississippi. Population was under a thousand, about 900 people. I lived next to a guy who was a pea farmer. And in the summer, he would take me and a bunch of other kids, most of them were older than me, out to these pea fields and we'd pick bushels of peas all day. Bushel is like a, you know, we'd, we'd fill up five gallon buckets. I don't know how, I can't even remember how many bushels that was, but we'd fill up these five gallon buckets. They'd take them back and they'd, you know, churn them out and sell purple whole peas. Really good food, by the way, if you're not from the South. But we would do this all the time. Well, one summer, his name was Billy Joe Barnes. Yes, I'm from Mississippi. Billy Joe Barnes gets a reaper. He gets this thing and he can just drive through the field. All of a sudden, I wasn't able to earn a cheeseburger and $3 every day in the summer anymore. Uh, I was out of a job at six years old. It's the first time I found myself on the unemployment line. But what, what I'm getting at is he got a reaper. He got a machine that was able to... Uh, you know, cultivate a lot more um, product, right? Faster than six-year-old boys that are earning cheeseburgers. So you need one. The bigger and the more fruitful your fields are, the more hands you need to help. Next slide. So this is going to be talking about building a team. So after that time has elapsed, and not, you know, it could be a year, two years, three years, whatever, it depends on how hard and fast you go at it, you know, and, and what resources you have to throw at it. But once, once you get there, Maybe even preemptively, if you you know, uh, you know, if you're really aggressive, you have to build a team. Your the initial investment in the Brock and Mortar was signage, a receptionist, rent, effort, and time. Effort and time probably being the biggest part of it, the one that most people miss. Now, if you've done what I told you, it's time to build your team. This is perhaps one of the most difficult and rewarding tasks. Okay, next slide. Practical steps: hire them fast, fire them fast. No. I said wrong, right? Who's heard that? Who's heard hire and fast, fire and fast? I personally don't believe it, okay? I don't, I'm, it's not for me. I get that a large, large organizations sometimes do have to hire big crops of groups, and I understand the concept. But for most of us building a brock and mortar, you can be selective, you can find people. Don't try to hire yourself though. Try to find other people with talents that you can really cultivate. In my opinion, um, you need to find people who do not understand their full potential and help them realize it. Find people who are talented, but they don't understand what's possible and show them and, and show them and give them the way through your brock and mortar, through your business, right? That's for me what hiring people is all about. It's finding the people, it's not finding the MBA, you know, graduates or all that. It's finding people that, you know, took a different road, but are very talented and then give them the lane to use that talent in your business. We've all talked about how our whys. I can tell you 
that one of my biggest unrealized whys was culture and cultivation. I didn't know it, you know, uh, you know I, I think a lot of times you understand your why as you grow your business or as you grow in, your, in life, you develop new whys. And one of the biggest whys for me has been seeing, you know, team members come to fruition or understand their capability and their talent and grow their talent, grow their skill set and be happy in your, your culture. You know, you're cultivating that talent and then you're helping them grow. Super rewarding, probably for me, has become more rewarding than you know, selling and helping Medicare beneficiaries, which was my first big reward. Next slide. Seven, seventh principle of seven. Everything else, okay? There's only so much I can cover in this amount of time. So it is a high level overview, okay? Now on that site that I, I sent you to, medicare.academy slash Brock and Mortar, you can actually go through there and there are some options on how to get more plugged in how to get more plugged into people that are doing it. Not just about the Brock and Mortar, but other concepts. We've grown, we've grown our phone sales, we've grown our distribution, there's all this kind of stuff. And there's a few different programs that we offer that help people plug into that concept. One of them, and probably the most popular, is our Medicare Monsters program. Uh, it's been a very, very uh, impactful thing on people, as you can see by going over there and looking at some of the reviews from people. But getting in a Medicare Monsters program where we have weekly accountability calls virtually, you can do it from anywhere, and it's an affordable concept. It's been super impactful for people, so I hope that you uh, go over there and check it out. And of course, please join our Medicare Gurus Facebook group where we have a ton of action uh, and a ton of questions answered absolutely for free over there. So check it out. Thank you so much for letting us uh, help you. And I hope to see you at MedicareCon 2020 by going over to MedicareCon.com. See you later. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. 8% Virtual, I have an unbelievable surprise guest speaker for you today, Mr. Brian Tracy, lifelong fan of your work. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend a few minutes with me today. Well, thank you. You know, you, you and I.